We therefore hold that the PASPA provision outlawing state authorization of sports gambling is unconstitutional. If you love gambling on sports, May 14th, 2018 changed everything. Breaking news to Supreme Court this morning, striking down the federal ban on sports betting. If you're an operator, if you're a state, if you're a league, this is going to be a seismic shift. It was the moment you no longer needed to fly to Vegas or place an illegal bet through a bookie. Since the Supreme Court's decision, more than two dozen states and D.C. have legalized betting on sports. Many are now hoping those tax revenues can salvage their pandemic-ravaged budgets. In the coming years, even more states are likely to jump on board. So just how much money are we talking about? Will states' cut of the action be enough to fund schools and pave roads? And are so-called sin taxes the future of local budgets? This is Capital One Arena, home to the NBA's Wizards, the NHL's Capitals, and now, after DC legalized sports betting in 2019, the city's first in-person sports book. Okay, so we came here to see how this all works. I just bet $10 on the Nuggets to beat the Nets. But before we dive into the numbers and see how much of my money goes to the government and how much goes to the sports betting companies, let's take a look at how we got here. On June 26, 1990, Congress held a hearing on government-run sports lotteries. Elected officials from states that had already legalized gambling on sports called it a matter of fiscal necessity. We are the only state with a sports lottery to raise revenues needed to pay for essential programs like education, social services, and economic development. Sound familiar? But aligned against them were the sports leagues. Their message, don't mess with the integrity of sports. We think this legislation is very important because it would protect the integrity and the character of professional sports by putting an end to state-sponsored betting on the games of professional sports leagues. Ultimately, the leagues won. In 1992, led by New Jersey Senator Bill Bradley, himself a former NBA star, Congress passed the Professional and Amateur Sports Protection Act, or PASPA. PASPA outlawed sports betting and sports lotteries, except in the few states where they were already legal. The law, also called the Bradley Act in honor of the New Jersey Senator, stood for 26 years until the Supreme Court struck it down over a challenge by, guess which state? New Jersey. The Garden State wanted to bring sports betting to its casinos in Atlantic City. Once the Supreme Court ruled the law unconstitutional in 2018, the floodgates opened across the U.S. Gambit DC, the world-class sports betting app and website. Now I can bet the game on FanDuel Sportsbook anywhere in Pennsylvania. Do it, baby. Strong, nice. Now, back to my $10 bet. Let's break down where it all goes. To start, it depends on where you live. If my $10 bet on the Nuggets happened in New Jersey, it would look like this. The house only pays taxes on revenue. So, and this is oversimplified for the purposes of this video, let's say that after overhead and other factors, the sports book nets $5. Because I placed my bet in person, New Jersey will take 8.5%, or roughly 42 cents. Quick side note, if I had made my bet online, New Jersey would tax it at 13%, meaning more money for roads, bridges, or even another Springsteen statue. So, what happens if I win my $10 bet? Winnings are taxed at state and federal levels. So in New Jersey, I would pay whatever my income tax bracket calls for. The highest in the state nowadays is 10.75%. Of course, that's not my bracket. And then I need to factor in my federal income tax rate. Of course, these examples are based on one bet, when in reality, taxes aren't calculated until the end of the year. But even at this small scale, this example gives you an idea of why so many states want a cut of the action. So what does that cut look like? In 2020, despite sports shutting down for a few months because of the pandemic, sports betting exploded. Bored Americans stuck at home because of the pandemic flocked to in-person sports books and to apps like DraftKings and OneBet. In total, sports books saw nearly $905 million in revenue in the five months following the return of sports in June, with $129 million of that going to states. So what's next? Just how far can taxes on sports betting go to plug deep budget holes? One industry analysis found that if all 50 states legalized sports betting, total revenue could hit nearly $19 billion. That would mean seven or eight billion going to governments, many of which require the funds to go to schools or infrastructure. Still, with state budgets estimated to be off by more than $100 billion in 2021 due to the pandemic, sports betting is only part of the solution. In the end, sports betting will likely be less of a game-winning buzzer beater for states and more of an average free throw.
Hey, Sam here. Uh, quick update on my bet. I didn't win. Kevin Durant had other ideas. Guy dropped 34 points. Nuggets ended up losing. DC, enjoy my money. I've got a pothole I know you can fix with me.